uh, I felt like when the Holy Spirit showed up for me, I was just overcome with emotion. And those were two moments too at, at both of those funerals where I was yeah. trying to lead a, you know, read a letter from my mom and I just, I couldn't do it. I read one line and I uncontrollably sobbed and I had to have someone else come up and read it for me. Um, so yeah, man, those, those moments are, are powerful. It's funny you say that because um, I'm thinking of two things. First, in, in 2007, when my grandfather passed, I wrote a letter honoring him as well. And I had my, I was going to have my brother read it because my brother at the time was a pastor. He's still a pastor, but he was definitely the one who could, um, who was polished in front of a pulpit and, and in front of people. And I said, you take this, Chris, I, I can't do this. You're going to read this. Yes, Jay, I'll read your letter. I promise. I said, all right, good. And then we get to the funeral and that night and I'm there or the, or the wake, the celebration. And I wasn't feeling good. Like my voice was half gone. I was obviously emotional, but I, right beforehand, I looked at him. I said, let me have that. He goes, you sure? I said, yeah, I got to try. I said, it's for Pa. We used to call him Pa. I said, I have to try. So I went up there and that's when I, I was, I, re I got through it, but not without a ton of tears, like literally crying the entire time reading it. But I wanted to do that because I felt like I needed to honor my grandfather that way mm -hmm. by saying something that came from me, not through me to my brother. But here's a full circle moment for you. 15 years later, um, tragically in January this past year, my, my brother-in-law um, passed away of a heart attack at 53. He died in his sleep uh, and he was fine for like, I mean, nobody knew there was anything wrong with him. He was snowmobiling, you know, three days before he, he passed, you know, he was fine. We had seen him at Christmas. He was fine. Um, this is my wife's sister's husband. And Tuesday morning, he, he doesn't wake up. And a couple hours later, my wife gets a call that Randy had, had died suddenly and he's 53. And I get a call or a text uh, a few days later from Wendy, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister, saying, would you be okay in speaking on behalf of the family and sort of being the, they use the word religious, so we're sort of being the religious you know, spokesman for the family. I said, of course, I'm honored to thank you. And it wasn't even a hesitation. Um, that my wife's side of the family, maybe not as devoted and, and, and deep in their walk with the Lord as my, my side of the family. So I understood that there wasn't really a person that could take this on. And my wife's like, I, you know, I'm not going up there. And I said, yeah, I said, I'll go up there. I just want to make sure you guys understand that I'm going to share the gospel. Is that okay? Because I feel like I'll miss a moment if, if I don't. And they both said, yes, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to pray. My sister-in-law just trusted me with that. And this was at a very, um, how do I put this? It was at a very secular funeral, I'll say. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of faith-filled people there, I could tell. Um, and I'm not even sure, to be honest with you, if my brother-in-law was, was a man of faith. That's sad to say, but it's just the truth. But he was a great guy. And I wanted to honor him properly, but I also didn't want to miss a chance. If God's going to put me up in front of people, I wanted to be able to share. And so 15 years later, after I couldn't even get out words at my grandfather's funeral, I'm standing at this funeral in the middle of January uh, in, in upstate New York, trying to you know, get out the words. And all of a sudden I could sense I was starting to get emotional as I remembered Randy. And it was really hard. I mean, he's 53. It was tragic on all levels, right? And friends and family were just in shock and they couldn't understand why would this happen to such a good guy like Randy? And it gave me an opportunity after I got through that moment when I almost broke down, but didn't, to say, you know what, God has a plan. Um, it's not always here for us to figure out, but, um, but there's a word called the hope that's used a lot in the Bible. And, you know, God gives us hope through his son, Jesus, that this isn't the end of this life after we die. And I said, I'm so grateful that there is this moment for all of us to be able to say yes to Jesus and put our trust in him and know that this life isn't the end. And I, I just shared the gospel and I walked off and I still was very sad, obviously. Um, and everybody came up to me and said, you did such a beautiful job. Thank you for your words. And I spoke, you know, about Randy in, a, in, a, in the best way I could to honor him. Then I prayed uh, in a way that maybe they hadn't heard someone pray, which was interesting. Um, you know, it wasn't some sort of contorted prayer from Psalm 23 or whatever. It was a prayer that I prayed. Uh, but I felt like 
I had this peace over me and I felt like God, God had set this up 15 years later for this moment. And I'm not saying I, I still didn't want to cry. I don't know if I've fully lost it in regard still to this day with losing my, my brother-in-law, but I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's kind of a full circle moment, you know, at 48 versus 33 or 34, or whatever I was being able to stand up there um, with this peace and this confidence to share the gospel, but also to, to speak in front of people and honor my brother-in-law.